ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be talking about the reverse asthma goal syndrome in relationship to Diablo 4. I'll explain everything about it and I'll also give you my thoughts on Diablo 4 as I've played all weekend and right now it's Sunday evening. So there are two things that I want to mention up front. The first is that this video contains a bunch of footage that I recorded myself, but this is footage recorded in 16 by 9 aspect ratio recorded on a 32 by 9 aspect ratio screen. I'll let you figure that out for yourself, but that means that some parts of the UI are simply missing because they're off screen. Otherwise, I could record the whole screen, but then half your screen would be black. As it is Sunday evening, this video is made after the first patch, which buffed a bunch of features and was overall well received, I would say. Let me talk a little bit about the approach I took when deciding to sort of make a video about this game. And that is that, at first at least, I didn't watch any content. I was aware of the sort of negative story around Diablo 4 and Season 3, but I decided to not get influenced at all, just watch nothing, play the game, have fun and, you know, don't let me be sort of negatively influenced by other content creators. I went in with the reverse Asmund Gold syndrome. I'll talk about that in just a second. I didn't open up any third party website, meaning no max roll, no health diet, nothing in that regard. And I took it one step further. I didn't even watch any content, meaning that I just basically played the game. I didn't listen to any Spotify playlist, nothing of that kind. I was just playing the game, enjoying the game. The game was all that I had in front of me. So I played the game like this until this morning. And then this morning I started to consume other content. Other content creators, I had basically made up my mind at this point. I was having a great time, by the way. And then I learned of all the criticism. Now, a lot of that criticism I noticed as well. I just wasn't as bothered by it as others. But that made me realize the title of this video, The Reverse Asmongold Syndrome. The first thing you should know about this is that I am a big fan of Asmongold. Typically someone says that and then starts taking a dump on that person, but that's not what's gonna happen at all. This syndrome that I'm talking about is related to Asmongold and how he played New World. What happened, for those unaware, was that Asmongold put so many hours into New World that he was way ahead of the curve before others were. He put like 500 hours in, I don't know, a couple of weeks and then started reviewing the game. And he was fairly negative about the game, especially the end game, the lack of variety, the lack of content. And he noticed that because he had 500 hours in the game and everybody else was at maybe 100 hours and hadn't really realized it up until that point. That is what I call the Asmongold syndrome. Now, the reverse is what I am experiencing. I am listening to people who've played this game much more than I have. And it's not that I don't play a lot of ARPGs, I just never really played that much of Diablo 4. So while others have played hundreds of hours already and then dive into season three and are very disappointed, I have maybe played in total 50 hours of Diablo 3 and I am enjoying myself. I am basically a gamer dad without kids enjoying Diablo 4 because why not, right? It's a great game. If you haven't experienced everything Diablo has to offer, which you haven't in 50 hours typically, right? Then it's a completely different game as if you already have like three, 400 hours. This game is not designed, right, to spend 300 hours in. It's clear as day, at least to me. And while I can easily enjoy BOE leagues for hundreds and hundreds of hours, but Diablo 4 on the other side, that is just not this type of game. And I am completely fine just playing a season, 25, 30 hours. This time I've reached max level, just a few hours ago reached level 100. But that should also tell you I wasn't power leveling. 
I wasn't doing anything like that. I was just playing the game, coming up with my own build, just taking on the content as it presented itself to me. And if you approach the game like this with the reverse Asmongold syndrome, meaning you are way before the moment where everybody else starts complaining, right? I just haven't reached that point in time that most other players consuming content or creating content have. I am basically still in the honeymoon phase of Diablo 4. And I'm gonna keep it that way because I'm gonna play maybe 30 hours a season and then call it a day. But that day, or well, let's say that 25, 30 hours I probably spent over the weekend, that was a good time. So then we get into the base game primarily because largely I'm still playing the base game with a little bit of an add-on which is season 3 and that base game is a decent game. I'm still enjoying very much the art style, the graphics, the combat feel, it's great I think in most cases, the music, just the lighting in this game, the world building, there is so much this game has to offer if you don't look for depth and if you just want a more superficial but very pleasing to the eye superficial ARPG experience and that is I think what this game is designed to be it's not the game where you need a bunch of guides you could if you want to do the penultimate content but I've cleared almost everything in this playing session of 30 hours except Uber Lilith but I killed everything else with my own build. Minions, a full minion necromancer, no less. The game is simple enough, the skills are straightforward enough, and I think the synergies are simple enough that you can make your own build. Yeah, it won't slap as some of the Maxwell guys, of course it won't. And if you really want to slap content in Diablo 4, then yeah, sure, go to Maxwell, but I think you should be aware that this is probably not the game for that type of playstyle. Because, first of all, there isn't that much content that requires a build like that. I mean, yeah, you could do Nightmare 100, but why? Like, I'm doing Nightmare 50 at the moment, going pretty smoothly, but I don't really see a whole lot of reason to go to Nightmare 75 or 80. I mean, yeah, I just don't see it. It's just another number, there's nothing else that's really new in there. And I think that's a bit of a different approach, an approach that suits this game much better, I would argue. Whereas the approach of looking at build guides and trying to come up with a build that's really good, or well, copy a build that someone else came up with that's really good, that is more how I approach Path of Exile. Because in Path of Exile, I have reasons to come up with such a build, right, or to steal such a build. I want to clear uber bosses. Those require you to have actually good builds. And I think that game compared to Diablo just has a bunch of reasons as to why you would want a build like this. Whereas Diablo 4 I think you should just go with the flow. It doesn't really matter what you do. Most of the content will be accessible. Most of the content is playable with most builds. And that is the design of this game. If you play the game like that, it's really not too bad. I am not oblivious to the fact that there are quite some issues with the season. Also watching the other content creators by now, I get it, right? Don't get me wrong. I just feel that quite a few of the issues and quite a lot of the frustration comes from playing the game as if it is Path of Exile or playing the game as if you are supposed to spend hundreds of hours in it. I just don't think you are. I don't think this is the game. So, with that in mind, I also have pros and cons that even with my limited playtime, I noticed before I started watching other people. So let's start with the pros. One of the things that I liked a lot more than in Season 2 is the quests and just the seasonal content in general. I think the quest line is great. It's got great voice acting once again. It has uh, good attention to detail, I would say. The storyline is well written. At some point, the old man from the storyline starts communicating via the robot. I think that makes sense in terms of lore, but it's also just really cool to see. It's like a walkie-talkie, but then this old man in the base somehow. Pretty fun, pretty interesting, and just a 
small tiny detail that I thought kind of shows that the developers do in fact care about the game they're making. I really liked the new boss, Malthus. You kill him once in the quest line, of course, but then there's also an Uber Malthus. Really interesting fight. I figured it out my, myself. Uh, the four pylons that you have to do something with. I'm not going to spoil the fight, but might show a little bit of footage. But very interesting mechanics. I think the right level of sort of difficulty you will die quite a bit at first because you have to figure out what all of these different mechanics do and are but once you do and you level up a little bit and you get a little bit more tanky so you can actually take a hit then it becomes uh, much better and i think once again here the boss fights are a lot more interesting and challenging and fun if you don't have a, a guide or well a build based on a guide that one shots these bosses or you know kills them in five seconds because then yeah sure i mean i know that feeling i mean it's nice i i guess but it is also kind of fun to actually figure out a boss uh, do not have an op build and in fact just have to play the game and yeah i, I keep saying this but I, I think it's quite important when playing the lo4 Another thing I really liked in the new season is the new hub, the gate hall. Very well designed once again, everything is neatly in one place. You have the portal or the waypoint in the middle and then all the vendors are directly around it. The next one I heard some complaints about but I thought especially after the patch it was pretty good. It is the multiple ways that you have to upgrade your pet. You have the world events where you summon the herald of Malthus. He drops a few of those tuning and governing stones. You have the chests that you can craft, the caches. They always drop two stones now and they are always stones that you don't yet have. So pro tip, open one cache at a time, loot them, open another one, loot them, open another one, loot them. Because that is how you get everything maxed out the most efficient way. I have everything maxed out, everything on level 10. Except of course the two stones that drop from boss. Uh, the drop chance is 0.5%. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but yeah, fine, I guess. There are a few more ways, of course, the vaults. You can do the vaults. There you can uh, make it to the end, which is really not that difficult. You can sort of trivialize the whole traps by buying enough of the uh, wards. Overall, I did like the vaults and the pet system. I know that it is in some aspects, which I'll soon talk about, a little bit underwhelming, but overall I kind of enjoyed the mechanics, the pet and the whole sort of design of it. What I have come to appreciate also is the progression in Diablo. If you don't follow leveling guides or if you don't try to rush it through level 100, within, I don't know, hours apparently, and I, I'm not sure why you would do that, then this game makes a lot of sense in terms of progression, right? You have the world tiers, you have the different bosses at different levels, you have both scaling content, which is typically the world and everything in it, like hell tides and legions and world bosses, and you also have static content, like the nightmare dungeons and the nightmare vaults, as they are tied to your level. And I think that's an, a good and interesting combination of keeping it interesting, always giving you a place to farm, which is in the world, and then slowly but surely progress in more uh, and higher nightmare dungeons, which draw better and better loot up until a point, because now I'm at nightmare 50, 55, and they just drop the highest item level gear which kind of begs the question like, yeah, why would you go even much higher, right? Uh, uniques, specific uniques apparently drop from specific bosses. Did a bit of farming as well. I killed most of them. Uh, the only ones I didn't kill were Lilith, I think, and uh, uh, Zir. Those are the two I didn't do, but I killed the rest. Duriel, the Beast in Ice with the new sort of way to get to his dungeon, which is, you know, pretty neat. A um, few others as well. Yeah, I feel that for your average sort of normie player, the progression is fairly straightforward. It's pretty clear what you're supposed to do. The options are all there. 
clearly sort of spelled out on the map. If you loot a new item, you can hover over it. It tells you where to go and how many you need in order to summon a boss. It's pretty decent and it made me, as someone who really doesn't know too much about Diablo 4, enjoy it quite a bit. All right, and then we get into the cons. Now it gets really interesting, so here we go. Even with my limited playtime, I noticed immediately, pretty much, how much recycled content there is. Once again, the storyline, while I thought it was interesting, it is yet again about demonic, you know, presence and influence. And at some point, this is getting old and they might have shut themselves in the foot a little bit with this sanctuary where apparently so far nothing else can happen unless there are demons involved. And yeah, to some extent I get it, you know, lore and everything, but they, they gotta figure out a way to come up with also interesting stories uh, without demons directly being the cause of it, I feel. Then, as a fairly normy D4 player, I was kind of amazed that we still don't have a loot filter. I mean, it's season 3, what the hell is going on there? And another thing, although uh, you could argue it's in line with the dead gamers because they're only gonna play one character anyway, is that the progression of the pet is not shared uh, between your characters. So if I were now to start a new character, which I'm not gonna do, then I have to grind the whole path progression stone system again, which is weird to me, right? Why would you do this? One of the biggest criticisms that others had and that I also share is the lack of impact of the season overall. The path, uh, but also the, the world events out there, it is really not impactful at all. And that's kind of a change can you compare it to season two? Because in season two, you dropped your first malignant heart and you equipped it and you instantly became more powerful. In my case, I was popping corpse explosions and corpse tendrils and whatever else left and right, which is basically turned my necromancer into an auto bomber, which was great. It immediately makes you feel the season. And here, in season three, something like that just doesn't happen. You get your pet, but the pet was fairly underwhelming and is primarily problematic because of the final point. And this is a point I'm not really seeing too many people talk about, but it has everything to do with the gameplay loop. Now, I was thinking about this quite a bit when I was playing and I thought, well, this gameplay loop I think if you write it down on paper, which I actually did, and you just like go through it and you hand it out in the Dev 101, you know, beginner class or maybe even advanced class, and you would ask these people like, hey, you know, is this a good gameplay loop? They'd probably say yes, right? It checks all the boxes. And I think the gameplay loop is really not too bad. So if I look at it, the gameplay loop, right? It is basically this. Uh, you farm the obelisks in the world, you summon the herald in the world, you enter the vault in the vault, and then you upgrade your pet using whatever you get out of the vault. And then you rinse and repeat, right? That is roughly the gameplay loop of the season. Now, nothing wrong with it, right? A very similar gameplay loop was there in season two. This is really not that much different. But then why is it not working? I think the biggest reason, and that's sort of the sin of the gameplay loop, is that a good gameplay loop is not noticed by players. You shouldn't really realize that you are in the same loop over and over again. And there are a few ways to make you not realize that, but mostly you should just distract the player from, you know, realizing that they're in a gameplay loop you have to divert the attention to something else. But Diablo 4 basically does the opposite. Not only is it not diverting the attention, it is basically pointing you towards the message like, hey, you have done this before. And there are a few reasons for this. One of the reasons is that it is awfully similar to previous season, right? The world event is the exact same, pretty much. You have the vaults, 
which you have gone through in the quest line, that's fine. But then they are the exact same vaults. Static layout, no variation whatsoever. The exact same vaults over and over again, which yeah, clearly make you realize that you're doing the same thing over and over again. It's not a new environment. There's nothing new in terms of art style. There's nothing new in terms of level design. It's all rehashed content, which once again, attributes to this idea that you have done this before. And another thing they didn't do, which the previous season did do, even though you were in the same gameplay loop, is it didn't make you feel powerful, right? Season three does not make you feel powerful. I just talked about this, but this is not helping in terms of gameplay loop because you're still noticing that you are there. You're not really being like, oh wow, I'm so powerful. No, because you're not so powerful. Hardly anything happens when you get your pet. And yeah, that's a real problem, I think. So all in all, I can relate to the criticism that was voiced by other content creators. Hopefully with my reverse asthma gold syndrome explanation, I can also make you realize why it didn't impact me that much. Why I actually had a good time for the 25, 30 hours that I played and why I will likely have another good time in season four when I'm just playing a character like a class I've never played before, like the Barbarian, just haven't played Barbarian. Might as well pick it up in season four, see what that's all about. And then once again, have another great weekend, maybe three, four days of Diablo four, and then put it away for the next 105 days or so. I am completely at peace with the idea that that is how Diablo four is designed and that is what you're supposed to do with it. I am sympathetic to those wanting this game to be more. It's just that I don't think it will happen. I am okay with that. But that's it. That's my take on Diablo 4 Season 3. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you soon. Bye bye.